How has channeling influenced your daily life? I would say it definitely has influenced uh, my life, channeling, um, in a deep way. And it is simply because as, uh, as I had to um, practice this attunement and this openness of which I was speaking before, there is an also a further openness in myself towards others. As I could begin to see my restriction in how I look at people, maybe my judgment, my evaluation, and how actually this team of people brought, brought such a much broader inclusive view of individuals that are, are, has allowed me to be uh, kinder really and more uh, broader, more inclusive. Also has helped me uh, to see um, perhaps that the sky is not the limit, you know, that one can expand in a way and, and, and be open to further understanding because uh, as they've been communicating with us for the last eight years in a very substantial manner, they have taken us on a journey and uh, there is that journey with them where I'm expanding and understanding more of myself and of others. So has influenced my life becoming more, um, more uh, um, inclusive of elements that I may not have, have included. Also is assisting me to face more clearly what are my limitations and sometimes my fears as they have a slight different perspective in, indeed in, in a lot of other aspects of how we live our daily life. And they're very much in contact with the daily life, so it's not an, an, an otherworldly perspective, but actually it has helped me in, my, in functioning better, I would say, definitely. I would like to know whether channeling has changed your attitude to death. Yes, I have definitely to say that actually I'm always interested in the subject of death. Death has been a very big subject um, for me um, since uh, quite young. Not because actually anybody in the family uh, passed in an untimely time, but actually because it was such a poignant, very relevant subject. And I have to say that channeling has created a further bridge of understanding for a, a mystery that I have great respect for that word called death because it means so many different things for different people. And so I still hold that quality of mystery around it. But I, it's as, I, really a channeler is somebody that has continuously learned to transit level of consciousness that are many deaths ongoingly. So, it does assist in, in a, a little part of you as always to die to a newer understanding or to a new way of working. So it has helped me to understand that to, to understand the bigger transition of living the physical form. Every day we encounter many deaths and every day that I uh, surrender and open to a level of channeling uh, which is uh, consciously chosen by me, it has helped me also to see the, that greater transition passaging that is called death uh, in a more auspicious manner, if I can put it that way, in a way that is not so threatening, uh, not so fearful. Uh, but it still hold that quality of, of being also very mysterious, which is very important to retain that. What do you actually do when you want to ask Munichi a personal piece of advice? Yes, um, I am very, you know, blessed that actually in my work I always have the support of my husband, and so he's there, uh, really having a wonderful conversation with Munichi. So I will ask him previous to the session uh, to put forward the question that I what I need clarification and so he will put them uh, for me and that's how it will take place and then I will uh, receive the answer through my husband or through some we record our sessions so through listening the recording again yeah. so if you while you're speaking while Munjiji is speaking through you do you hear him I do hear uh, his words because I ask also quite at the very beginning of our work 
to be a part of me to be present. I think we are at a level of consciousness evolution where individuals have to take a sense of responsibility to be involved in whatever it takes. So it's a dual process of, of letting go at one level where my mind can be particularly still and very tranquil but present. So um, I can hear the words but there is no thoughts or concept in my mind and my mind is like very far really like my body my mind are very remote but my consciousness is present and is just listening so um, then i can hear but 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 it, it fades away very quickly so i need somebody else to input me for that answer although i also do receive an energetic imprint and not just the words the answer but there is an energetic imprint and that I received directly from them. What would you say to a skeptic who thinks that Mundiji is a figment of your own imagination? Well, first of all, I, I think the work I'm doing, um, it's relevant if people can experience the exchange that takes place as they are communicating through me. So, first of all, I would say that they need to experience something. Once they have the experience, whatever they think is a figment of the imagin or my imagination, or maybe a part of my personality or not, it's almost secondary to me. Uh, it's not relevant to me what they think in this term, but it is that of benefit to them in some way. That is what is relevant to me. That's more important. Then, as there is a kind of rapport, because something can be beneficial perhaps there to them, they can retain their belief. It's perfectly all right for me. Actually, somebody thinks is a, um, an aspect of my subpersonality or a, a construction. To me, I'm practical. Does it benefit them in any manner? And they will know that because they will be uh, f uh, making further inquiries and be curious further but if it doesn't benefit them they will think well it's a figment of her imagination and that's fine with me it's not my experience but you see it's an experiential thing so nobody can convince of somebody else unless they have an experience not through words i cannot convince anyone